Welcome to Imperion Galactic Survival. I'm Probability of Success Zero and this is episode 13 in my workshop series where I discuss creations of my own as well as creations of other users. Now today we'll be covering a revised design of mine. Uh, that is going to be of the Hurricane. Now I previously reviewed it uh, when it was in its pre series 3 release status so it was still a work in progress and I was pretty happy with the design at, at the point of review and then I brought it through into my series 3 playthrough unfortunately um, the ship had a couple of flaws so I didn't test it properly in Craig because you can't really do it properly and it had a couple of flaws and while playing series 3 those flaws become more and more apparent so taking that knowledge i've come back into the workshop loaded up my current design of the ship and i've spent some time modifying it to kind of give it a bit more oomph for future playthroughs so i want to show you what i've got so far this is now the mark 25 h and uh, the current one we're using is the i think it's the mark 25 E, I'd like to say, I think it's E that we've got to. So, okay, sorry, I'm I'm losing count of where my revisions have got to. So anyway, without further ado, let's uh, have a quick look at the hurricane as it is now. So the first thing you'll notice is we've gone for a new color scheme. So gun is the bright white and also the um, standard plated design and in has come the kind of pale grey with kind of the I don't know what you'd call this texture it's kind of like very mechanical plating so it adds a little bit more texture to the surface of the ship I wasn't happy with the the kind of uh, plates that we're using um, it sort of made the ship look kind of patchwork well, not patchwork, but more like, I don't know, sh like shattered glass, basically. It gave it a, a kind of uniform but split up design. And I wanted something a bit more random. And this kind of provides that texture without me having to go around and paint loads of different sections. So the other thing I wanted is to give it more of a... A military feel because it is a military ship this is not an exploration ship this is very much a military vessel and this texture does give it that kind of military feel uh, the another well the other thing you'll see is the fact that the side doors at the front have now gone and instead what we've got is these bulges that are coming out in its place and you'll also notice the hull is kind of being straightened all the way down instead of being kind of stepped in um, the reason I've done that is to add additional protection to the front of the ship because the front of the ship was taking a lot of damage well a lot of firepower uh, from enemy ships so I thought it was wise to kind of reinforce the front segment a bit now I am aware that I could take the opportunity to reinforce this a little bit here as well but I kind of want a bit of a difference in the textures so we're going to leave that for now um, I've put two sentry guns on these bulges and I've put some hardened steel in there now I have taken the opportunity to go through the ship and put hardened steel in certain places like down here to kind of reinforce certain sec uh, different segments now in my series 3 playthrough we had an incident where a drone snuck up on us and somehow perfectly perforated a shot right through the hull just here into the medical bay and it blew the entire medical bay to pieces and we nearly lost our ability to spawn back onto the ship. So what I've done is I've reinforced this segment with uh, hardened steel to give it a bit more oomph and I've also done some work on the medical bay as well so it's a lot bigger now and a lot more spacious and also it's got a bit of texture going on as well so anyway let's continue on the outside so 
In terms of the exterior, most of the changes were at the front of the ship. I've now included a heads up display. Now this is something I put on most of my ships now. It's a standard kind of interface if you've seen it on some of my other ships. I've added this little rotator wheel in the center because I kind of like that effect. And I've created this bracket effect around the center cursor now. When we actually bring the hood up, if we just do that, you can see the crosshairs all line up perfectly. So it is perfectly aligned at the minute. So let's just come out of that again so you can admire that without uh, distraction. Now we've got a little readout up there about the capital ship, sh um, pardon me, capital shield generators initialized and the capital warp drive is charged. And then obviously we've got the readout about the launches being ready and turrets being ready. And there's the kind of, oh yeah, I need to update that display. It's not a 25G, it's 25H now. No, is it 25G? I honestly don't know. Let's just have a quick look. No, it is H. I'm not losing my mind. Right, so I need to update that display as well. But um, yeah, I've put some lighting in here now because uh, one of the problems I had previously is the, the bridge was quite dark. So I put these three lights in here. I've also tried to keep the textures uniform. So the ceiling's like a plate design. The floor is kind of like this standard um, bumpy textured floor effect that continues into the corridor. These are now just storage areas rather than being anything like a, you know, before it was the airlock. But yeah, it's just a storage area. Then I've done some work with this created this uh, little drop down here um, I've got rid of the split level just here it wasn't doing anything uh, I've expanded the, the the ammo storage so the ammo storage now goes all the way through oh you'll notice I put the floor under the units just here even though they're upside down there's actually a floor underneath it now so I might flip them over to be fair, um, but for now I'm going to leave them in there. Um, down here, crew area as before, these are the um, crew quarters, nothing's changed there. I'll put some more lighting elements in, because you know, it was getting rather dark. Uh, if we come through to the back, ah, yeah. We just need to cover the uh, medical bay. So yeah, the medical bay got expanded because uh, I had all this extra space and I thought, well, it's pointless not to use it. So I expanded it into the hall, into the main hangar, well, not main hangar, into the main hull area a bit more. So it kind of extends a lot further than it did before and also I've kind of stepped out the walls a little bit to create this little rim around the outside which will put a lighting element into it. That combined with the two lighting elements in the ceiling really light up this room and now you can see all the equipment's pretty spaced out so we shouldn't get that single shot to take out your medical bay thing going on again. Um, we've still got our fridges and our um, food processors here they've not changed let's just come out of god mode for a second now here's something i did because it was annoying me i had one two three and four constructors but we don't need four constructors especially when we've got two small constructors over there so what i've done is i've actually taken one of the constructors out i've expanded the cargo bay here though that's not added to the capacity it's just for a visual effect and I've stuck the armor repair the repair station in here because previously in my Surge 3 playthrough I kind of wedged it in here under the floor and it was a right mess. So I've actually integrated it into the wall here. And the other thing I've done, you can't really see it, but if we look towards the back, I put a wireless unit at the front. Now, most of our wireless units in here are located at the back of the ship. I managed to squeeze one in at the front so we've actually got quite an extensive wireless connection area going around the ship now so that gives us good access to our inventory from the front and the rear of the ship now um, so there's another thing I've done 
Um, what else? I'm doing a little bit of cosmetic changes back here. Um, I've dropped these units in here because I did say I wanted an OT station in the hangar bay. But um, it wasn't practical there. I did try it. So I decided to have it on the way out of the hangar bay. So you kind of grab your stuff, you head into the hangar bay, jump in your vehicle and then you head off. Uh, we've still got this uh, second uh, cargo bay at the back here. It's 320,000 storage. So that's two 320,000 storage units on the ship. I've kind of textured this to kind of match basically everything else in the area. Um, these here are meant to be used to store additional fuel. Um, sort of like a temporary storage, uh, fuel storage unit. I mean, that's essentially what they're supposed to be for anyway. So over here in the engineering room, you'll notice I've done a bit of texture work. Uh, the floor is now the same as the rest of the place. Uh, so is the floor in there. So that gives it a bit of a universal feeling. Um, the ceilings, I'm not sure what to do about ceilings. Um, but I'll just leave them for now. I've got no lighting elements in here at the minute. Uh, this thing does glow a bit when when it's night time. And plus, you know, it's engineering. Maybe I'll put some red lighting in there. Um, over here, it's the same as before. Pretty much the gravity generator fuel pods. You got your generators in the wall. You kind of got your rails to stop you accidentally. <coughs> accidentally stepping into the hot zones so you're not going to get cooked or radiated uh, then we're through into the hangar bay now I did say I wanted to put a lift in there to go upstairs but I wasn't able to work that into the bay now you can tell immediately with the new texture it does work a lot better um, I didn't realize this until I was doing this but these windows are technically not um, symmetrical across the hull. One is actually longer than the other and kind of tapers off different to the other, if you notice. Yeah, I didn't realize that until I was actually working on the, the hangar bay. I've managed to get this uh, storage bay in here. This is the one that we're using for the salvage module at the back. Uh, now, the final change is actually above the hangar bay. So let's just go upstairs for a second. And this is just cosmetics. Right, so we've now got um, basically a walkway across the top of the hangar bay. Now, technically speaking, we can't stick anything in there because of obviously this bit, but there's nothing stopping us putting a couple of modules in here. We could, for example, put some cargo units in there so that when you come down here you could run across and drop some stuff in some cargo thing just just or even just some lockers for visual effect but i just thought that was kind of nice the ability to walk across the top of the the hangar bay and look down it was just uh, something i thought was quite nice now uh let's just head out the top again um uh, there's no real changes to the weapon systems other than um we switched over to the well we did have originally on the version a of this we did only have three rocket launchers on the top and bottom hull uh, which has now been replaced with four rocket launchers top and bottom and we replaced the two flat cannons top and bottom in front of the um, in no, no, sorry, let me correct myself. There were three... F there were two flat cannons. Both on the underside of the ship, I think. One in front of the artillery on the bottom of the ship. And one at the back of the ship where the motor tool turret is. Now, the radar dish got moved to the back of the ship. That was part of the um, version E change, I think. And we replaced them with 
plasma turrets and the reason we've done that is because the plasma turrets function very similar to the artillery turrets in terms of area of effect damage and being a projectile so I kind of wanted like a smaller artillery gun to complement the larger artillery gun so I've gone for the plasma artillery pairing on the top and bottom parts of the hull so we've got that additional firepower top and bottom along with uh, four rocket launchers on the top and four rocket launchers on the bottom we've now got four additional sentry turrets left and right replacing the original two sentry turrets that were on the side of the hull um, the rear of the ship has lost all guns I know that might end up coming to bite me back in the ass quite literally uh, and replaced with a radar dish on the back which was decorative before just some plating and the multi-tool turret so we are now technically only got two two four sentry guns facing backwards uh, and two projectiles that's all the defense on the rear ship depending on a enemy's attack vector they could run a mark of the chain guns as well but in terms of the rocket launchers no in terms of like having like flat cannons in the face no they're gonna have a clear run the the rear of this ship is pretty under defended now you really need to be careful about that with this ship but then again it is something that I haven't really encountered as much of a problem most of the time I'm engaging from the front this is clearly a front facing ship uh, you know better if you can side side onto something broadside it because because the amount of firepower you can bring to bear is just going to be astronomical right so I think I'm going to wrap this review up for now um, there isn't much more to say uh, I hope you like the changes I'm certainly liking the colour and the texture change I think that really works I do like the little addition to the front hull now I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to bring this change through into the current playthrough um, is it would require me dismantling the current ship and probably respawning it back in or trying to reproduce a lot of these changes in terms of the texture change I've got no chance of doing that by hand that would just take too long um, creative is so much better for that um, so yeah that's the hurricane mark 25 H everyone I hope you like it very much so for now guys I'll say goodbye and uh, I'll catch you in the next episode so in a bit